Yes! 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 I think so. I think so. Master, Master Charles is not balling with us. Oh my God! What? You see this? Tell us, Chris. So I posted a video a few weeks back, me playing with the Grand Champion level player in 3v3. I'd say we did pretty well in those games in the video, but we did play more after that video ended, and I struggled a lot. Uh, I think with one minute left in one of the games, I had like 18 points, meaning I literally touched the ball nine times. Uh, a little later, I was sitting at champ two, and I just felt completely stuck, so I sent a replay of that game to a high-level player, and he gave me some important tips. So one mistake I tend to make against higher level players is feeling pressured into going after every single ball. Like if the ball is in my area, I feel like I just have to go for it because the other team is extremely fast and they're going to pressure me and I have to make my decisions quickly. But there are times where you don't need to make any challenge. There are times where you just have to stand back, let them hit it to you, and then you can start a counter attack. Because if you start feeling like every single hit they make is a dangerous one, chances are you're just going to be running around not being helpful whatsoever. Uh, you can see that in this game because I, like I said, I touched it nine times throughout the entire game because I just felt like every single hit they made, I had to be right there countering it and I made some pretty useless touches myself but the key here is to take advantage of their useless touches and just control the game more. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be playing fast, but you don't want to try too hard to play fast, if that makes sense. A defensive tip that could take you a long way is make sure you're not staring directly at the ball. I got caught out of position a few times doing this and it always just gets hit right over your head and you're not in a good spot to deal with it. So you want to make sure you're in a good offensive and defensive position at all times and just try not to be staring directly at the ball. This is mainly good when you are waiting for the opponent to make a touch and you don't know where they're going to hit it. So it's, it's always good to angle your car in a way where you feel like you can best deal with that. And it's usually not staring at the wall. I don't think anything good has ever come of that when I've done that. One thing I didn't realize I was doing a lot was flipping constantly because I know you want to play as fast as possible and flipping is obviously a good way to build up speed but I think a lot of times when you flip it'll just put you out of position for the next hit so you want to be really careful about when you flip in game. So I noticed that and I just started using boost to get to where I wanted to go rather than flipping and it allowed me to adapt to a lot more challenges that were being made throughout the game. And I think flipping kind of just takes you out of that a lot of times. And you're kind of struggling to get back into the play because you put yourself in a position where you've like committed to this one area for like one second or so. So this is the replay from my session where I hit Grand Champion. Unfortunately, it's not the game that I actually hit GC in because I just completely forgot to save the replay, but it is from the same session. So I'll go over my decision making process and you know just what I'm thinking uh, for each play. So keep in mind, just because I hit GC doesn't mean I'm a perfect player by any stretch. I made a lot of terrible decisions and uh, hopefully you guys can learn from those as well. But hopefully you can also learn from my good decisions as well. So let's get into it. So another thing I should have mentioned that actually helped me a lot was uh, turning my chat off because normally what would happen when I played uh, solo queue was I'd start off having a few good games and then I'd start playing poorly, teammates would flame me and would kind of dampen the mood for the night and I'd lose all the progress I made. So I just decided to turn chat off and it actually helps a lot. You can focus a lot more on your gameplay. So yeah, but I go for every kickoff because of this and I risk the double commit kickoff just because don't want to deal with salty teammates. But yeah, if you ever see any double commit kickoffs, no, that's the reason why. So I'm just going to be third here. You'll see me being third a lot, I think, because I just don't want to risk double committing with my teammates. And I think it does cost me at some times because I should definitely be second. But it also does help us defensively at times, I think. So I try to be up quick for that. And I just have no idea where that guy came from. Did not see him. And they scored. Missed that boost completely, but luckily that one was there for me. That was a ball I just completely gave away. I think my mindset here was to get a left to my teammate, but I just completely missed the touch. That's one thing I'm really bad at at this level, I think, is um, mechanics, for sure. 
but you also see that I had the option here to just control this and dribble it, maybe get a flick. Uh, I kind of forced this pass. It was, a, I think it was the right idea, but just didn't execute it properly. So I'm trying to pick a side here that I want to face, and uh, <laughs> I can't believe we scored that. Wait. <laughs> oh, no boost. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, luckily my teammates are just letting me go for a kickoff. No confusion there. And we scored again. <laughs> yeah, some quality analysis right here. But I guess one thing I should say is that when I don't see any big boosts available to me, I just completely shift my focus to getting these small pads. I try to get two or three and then maybe come back and support the play. So I always like to cheat up on kickoffs. But if I do see my teammate going for it as well, um, I'll make sure to leave it for him. So he jumped a little early for that. I figured I had to get in the way. Maybe I had time to get that mid boost, but I just wanted to be safe, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of these awkward moments where there's a lot of space, and I don't know if it's a ball that I should go for or my teammate, so I typically just try not to panic. So I don't rush anything. If I see him go for it, I'll just back off and try and support him. So make sure not to get too close to him. So I can be a little more useful. And here is something I haven't done a lot. I kind of like to pick a side here and get ready for a challenge on the wall. I think a lot of times maybe I try too hard to uh, follow up my teammate's hit. Like expect him to get a good 50-50 down the middle or something. But this time I just committed to the wall and it was the right decision. Yeah, here my teammate wanted to be second so I just went to third. And I think here I figured that... I couldn't really get a good challenge on this ball, so I was going to have to wait for him to take a shot. And I think it was in a decent spot to cover it, if he did shoot it, but he did pass this. And it's a really good pass. I wasn't sure if he meant to do it, but luckily it didn't cost us here. I think one thing I should have done though, you want to try and maybe complete this rotation into net. When you get inside the net, it gives you a lot more vision. And that's another thing that helped me a lot with getting to Grand Champ, was just these in-net rotations. It gives you a lot more vision and... It's a lot more safe. You're protected from demos as well. I'll be on the right in case he wants to hit it to me. And that works because it goes to our third. There, I just try to play patient, but I am too far away from the play. And this is something I really have to work on. Uh, I'm so often just completely away from the play. Too far away to do anything useful. And that's why this guy beats me to the ball. Yeah, I figured I could have gone for this but it would have been an awkward touch, so I just kind of fake jumped and rotated out. Make sure when you can't really make any useful touches anymore that you rotate out, just so your teammates know they can push forward. Again, just trying to get in the way, so it's easier on our last. Always good to have one guy challenging. I think this was a really good pass, and I just wasn't in a good spot to get it. I think I probably should have been a little closer to him, so I could have definitely connected with this pass quicker. So I'm going to be patient here. I know I'm probably beat no matter what. Although, I think one thing I should have done better here. Remember when I said you have to rotate out as soon as things get awkward? That's what I didn't do here. Yeah, see, my teammate just doesn't go for this because he sees me right here. If I rotate like way sooner, he'll just jump at this and it's an easy save. Good shot though. It's a good pass. Another thing I suck at is my aerials. I should definitely put that at least on target. I'm just gonna back off here, wait for his touch, put it to the side. Yeah, so remember when I said about not flipping? This is a key situation why you shouldn't be. Notice how I decided to commit to this space really early and the ball actually comes right to this area and now I'm way out of position to deal with it. And it just makes this awkward moment. Okay, so now I'm going to be challenging this ball. I try not to slam it because I figured it would be a pretty bad 50-50. So I try to be a little softer, maybe get it pinched middle. Didn't work out too much. So I can control this. Not the best, but as long as it's not a dangerous situation for us, that's normally okay. 
I think I focus more on putting us out of dangerous situations than I do giving us positive ones. And that might be how you want to play in solo queue. Just be really defensive, but also try to be there for your teammates when they do make plays. That's a really nice shot. Good save. A little out of position here, just kind of turning everywhere. Yeah, here I could have just stayed forward. It wouldn't be a good idea to do this, but I know a lot of people would probably just keep on this ball and then backflip. But like I said, if it's awkward for you, you're going to have to make a touch like that, then just rotate out. So this is one thing I did a lot that cost me, I think, was just kind of cheating on the inside post here to support. It's really useless. Like, this is a terrible supporting position, and it'll just get... It'll just result in the ball getting hit over my head. It's really useless, so don't do that. I think when you're supporting here, it's best to just pick a side. So I should have been maybe getting to the left, or just getting closer to this play in general. So wait for this touch, rotate back. Don't want to overcommit for that. Now I can get a high touch on the backboard. And good follow. A lot of times, maybe at champ two or so, you might be tempted to just keep hitting it on the backboard because that's how you ranked up in the first place, I'm sure. Or that's one of the things you did to rank up. But a lot of times they will be there. So you want to be careful about when you hit it on their backboard. Try and make it count. Like it's okay if they are there. Maybe they'll double commit for it or use their boost to get it. But uh, the most useful passes off the backboard are in these situations where no one is on the backboard and it'll just be completely uncontested. And it's the most awkward thing to deal with. One goal lead, 30 seconds left. Usually at this point I'm playing pretty safe. I don't know if this guy let me go for kickoff earlier. That's kind of weird. He went for it this time. I'm gonna try and support. Wait for this hit right, if he gets it. A little slow though, so I'll let Salter go for it. And there we go. So there are times where I could have just pushed this earlier, but I felt like it was more important to be patient rather than just going for a useless touch. So I wait for my teammates to make plays and then I come in on my own. And that's the forfeit. So hopefully that helped some of you trying to make that push to Grand Champ. I realize that maybe if you're lower than Champ, it might not be as helpful because there are a lot of things you got to work on if you're uh, that much lower than Grand Champ. But I think if you're close, like Champ 2, Champ 3, and you're just trying to make that push, hopefully this gives you at least somewhat of an idea of how you should play to actually get to that rank. And like I said, I don't play perfect by any stretch. I'm not very aggressive. I'm not the best in the air or anything, but I just try to play safe with my positioning, try not to get in my teammates way. And yeah, just try and be a helpful supporting teammate. And maybe that's the play style that'll work best for you when you solo queue. I think in the future, I'll also try to upload the game where I struggled in that I kept talking about, because I think you'll see a lot of improvements in this game from that game. And it might be of more use to you to see completely struggling at that rank than just the regular old 4-2 forfeit win. Hopefully this helped you out though. I'll definitely do more analysis videos in the future. Maybe not on me. Maybe if you guys want to send me some. I have a Discord set up. It's in the description if you want to check it out. But yeah, 